have more details on AMD's 3D vCache chips. Nvidia wants you to know that they're looking into your graphics cards melting, and Nvidia is playing nice with AMD and Intel? Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. While you enjoy your breakfast in today's top story, we're gonna be talking about some new details coming out around the 3D vCache chips that we're expecting AMD to launch sometime next year. These are hotly anticipated because the Ryzen 7000 series has been a little underwhelming, especially when you compare it to their last generation CPU of the 5800X3D. So a lot of people were just like, I'm gonna wait for the 3D vCache version of uh, the new ones, because why would I buy anything else if I'm just trying to play video games? Well, turns out that you might not be able to get that if you're looking for 12 and 16 core versions of those 3D vCache chips. A well-known leaker coming out and talking about how AMD is only planning on a six and eight core Zen 4 3D vCache chip to launch sometime in the first half of 2023. We will likely see these announced at CES and then released sometime before June is kind of when the first half of 2023 would be, but there is no indication of high core count chips being paired with 3D vCache. This is in spite of AMD first showing off 3D vCache with a 5900X. That led a lot of people to believe we were going to get a 12 core version of this. And from what we're gathering right now, it doesn't look like you're ever going to get something like that, maybe potentially a year down the line, but definitely not in the first half of 2023. Obviously, this is not 100% official by AMD at this point. So just hold the phone there, but it does seem to be rather indicative of what we've kind of seen from AMD in the past with 3D vCache, getting something like only a 7600X3D and a 77, 7800X3D, whatever they want to call it, would be what's on the table and not something like a 7900X3D or 7950X3D. Those are just not going to be released, at least according to this report. But with pricing, it gets a little co more complicated because they just launched the chip, so they're not likely to disconnect count them, which they kind of had to do for the 5800X3D to make sense at its price point because it came in at what the 5800X used to cost, but then they dropped the point of that. Either maybe these are going to replace the lower end chips entirely, or there's going to be this weird middle gap where the 7600X3D is going to cost the same as the 7700X, and you just have to choose if you want more cores or much faster performance in video games because that's what we're expecting the X3D chips to do. But let me know down below in the comments, do you get disappointed by this news? No 12, 16 core X3D chips? I want to hear from you down below in the comments. And NVIDIA hears you on your GPUs melting if you've got an RTX 4090. They really do. They are continuing to investigate the reports. However, they don't have further details to share yet. NVIDIA and their partners are committed to supporting their customers and ensuring an expedited RMA process for them, which is the first time we're hearing that NVIDIA is directly addressing the melting 16 pin power connector on their RTX 4090, which the 4080 will likely use as well. It doesn't seem like NVIDIA is going to give us an update any time soon. There's been some suspicion that it is due to the power connector itself being flawed. And then Johnny Guru came out and said, no, 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 it's not that. It's the fact that you're not plugging it in hard enough, okay? You just gotta go deep with the connector and then you'll be fine. It remains to be seen what the official story is. NVIDIA still giving us a non-answer on that, but at least you know they're gonna help you with a swift and speedy RMA. And what we've been watching over the last little bit with crypto stonks is a swift and speedy decline. Bitcoin's down another 2% to be at just under $16,500. Ethereum's down 3.6% to be at 1221. And Dogecoin's down 5% to be at 8.5 cents. We talked about this last week and how it was tied to FTX, one of the major crypto exchanges going down. And it's coming out that they are officially filing for bankruptcy. They have a whole bunch of stuff that's gone wrong with them. I'm not going to go into the details here, but it's one of the largest uh, amounts of money wiped off the face of the planet in just a little bit by, I think, the guy who ran the company was worth 10 to 16 billion dollars or something like that and now it's now it's dead and it also came out that there was unauthorized transactions that were happening as part of FTX and that FTX themselves claim that they they've been hacked and that their apps are malware and that you shouldn't be using them which is a little suspicious based on what I was reading I mean it doesn't seem to jive with the idea that somebody's actually not trying to uh just run away with as much money as they possibly can no this is totally definitely real and real malware but also 
big problems also happening in other exchanges. Crypto.com announcing that they just oopsie doopsie sent $400 million worth of Ethereum to, to the wrong address. It was to another exchange who needed the money allegedly to make sure that they uh, were meeting collateral means, saying that they do have enough liquidity, making proof with that during an audit that was happening. And then they sent the money back to crypto.com. And so the crypto.com has it now, but the exchange that used it to prove that they hadn't said that the money wasn't used for their audit. However, there's some details to prove that it was used in the audit. And then Binance, which is one of the biggest exchanges, uh, kind of stoking that fire. They stoked the fire of the FTX decline, and it also looks like they're stoking the fire of the crypto.com decline. But it does look like uh, no regulation. I mean, a lot of fun happening in the crypto markets. We'll likely see a little bit of instability for a little while as major exchanges just continue to, to have infighting. And I'm gonna fight with Reese. Boy, where's my deals? I didn't get any over the weekend. I need more, all right? I'm Jones. You got any more of the deals, Reese? Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Happy Monday, everyone. Hope you guys had a good weekend because we're starting off this week's deals with a classic. The Still Series Arctis One wireless gaming headset with this 2.4 gigahertz wireless USB-C dongle. It's currently going for only $63.72, which is 36% off. And next up, we have Team Group's T-Force Extreme ARGB RAM. This 32 gig kit of DDR4 4000 megahertz RAM is currently going for only $129.99, which is 31% off. And lastly, we have Gigabyte's Aorus FO48U, a massive 48 inch 4K OLED panel display with 120 hertz refresh rate and one millisecond response time. This is practically an LG you see one free desk without the TV tuner with built-in stuff like a KVM switch. This is currently going for $899.99, which is $600 off or 40% off. Honestly, I would love one of these, but it would take up like 90% of my desk space. Actually, I could, I could probably mount it on the wall. Anyway, you guys can find the links for this and more in the video description. And with that, enjoy the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks. That was a good that was a good showdown between Reese and I and Tesla is trying to show down with different charging connectors across the entire North America because they want to be the charger for vehicles in North America with them putting forward saying, hey, Tesla's charging system is superior. It has more rollout and you should just use it, which to some extent in EU as well as other regions of the world, there's more competition in the EV market where the EV charging stations are more robust. So CCS made more sense to adopt for everybody, whereas here in North America, or at least in the United States, Tesla has a huge dominating force when it comes to the actual number of chargers that are available. And there would be an argument to be made, at least just based on abundance and the fact that it's smaller and less unwieldy as a CCS connector uh, to, to make them the de facto one of choice. I don't know. I'm not gonna argue about this. Last time I chose HD DVD, I got burnt. So I just will stay out of that argument and I'll just wait and see what rises out of the rubble. And that's kind of what I'm waiting for on Twitter because there was a whole slew of things that happened last week. The last thing I reported on was the fact that Twitter had rolled out $8 verifications of Twitter Blue where everybody was getting a check mark. And then they rolled out an official gray badge to separate people who were really official from the people who just paid for it. And then they rolled that back and then they canceled Twitter Blue because they're like, there's impersonation issues going on, which has led to the devaluation of specific companies like Eli Lilly and Lockheed Martin to the tune of billions of dollars to the point where there actually might be lawsuits coming against Elon Musk and his company because of just how horrible this entire rollout has been. And then after they stopped rolling out Twitter Blue because of the impersonation issues, they re-rolled out the gray check mark to make sure that you know if somebody's verified as an official person, which is what the blue check mark was initially supposed to do. But now you have two check marks. And as we all know, things get less confusing the more elements you add into it. So if we just continue to add different check marks, like I'm, I'm certified the number one newsboy of tech YouTube, that that should be my verification badge. Thanks, Elon. And thanks, Remedy, for coming out with Control 2. They're announcing it. It's coming out in case you liked that initial game. And in case you like the Strix cards, it's been found out that Asus is going to be coming out with an RX 7900 Strix version. However, the question is, is it going to use the same cooler as the NVIDIA ones? Because it's possible that Asus and other card manufacturers have already designed these coolers. And in order to save money, they change how it actually cools the die 
by spacing and moving the heat pipes, but for the most part, it's the same shroud and everything else that could uh, help to reduce costs. And so we might actually end up seeing cards that are just as big on AMD's side as they are on Nvidia's side, even though they don't need to be in order for companies to just save a little bit of cash. Who knows? I don't, I, it, it, it's not unprecedented. But what does seem to be a little unprecedented is Nvidia playing nicely with other companies, especially when it comes to their own proprietary tech that you need the new RTX 40 series for, DLSS3's frame generation technique, allegedly according to Igor's lab, plays well with other upscaling technologies and that you can turn on frame generation in a game like Spider-Man and then you can turn on something like AMD's FSR or Intel's XESS and you do not have to use the upscaler that's actually baked into DLSS 3. So you have the benefits of DLSS 3 with frame generation. And then if AMD's FSR, it works better for the upscaling, you can use that instead and Nvidia doesn't block that. They allow you to just turn on frame generation by itself, which as you can see, does make a huge improvement when it comes to a game like Spider-Man Remastered. Natively, the game can do about 125 FPS on the RTX 4090. You turn on frame generation, you get up to 167. So that's already a little bit faster, but then you throw in something like AMD's FSR Ultra Performance Mode and you're up to 230. This, hey, they're playing nicely. I'm just, I'll take it. That's that's an unprecedented dub from Nvidia and I'm pr very precedented with ending hot news.